Good morning, New Emmanuel. I hope and trust everybody's doing good this morning and that you're ready to praise the Lord. I'm getting my blessing because I'm looking down here at what Colleen's going to do for the devotion and I see my mother's Bible. <laughs> so yeah, it's one that she gave me, my mother gave me years ago and I just gave it to Colleen a couple of months ago. So it really is a blessing to look down and see that this morning. If you will, let's stand and go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we welcome your Holy Spirit. Because, Father, <laughs> we are nothing without you. And, Father, we just thank you. We thank you for all your blessings. We thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ. And, Father, we just want to lift up, Father, the unsaved to you today, Father. Lord, we just ask, Lord Jesus, that uh, you'll speak to their hearts. Lord, that you'll draw them in, Father. We ask, Lord Jesus, for the ones that are in backslidden conditions, Father. Lord, not only just the ones that's that, Father, but the one that's straddling the fence. Father, we just ask that you'll just knock that fence right out from under them, Father. And Lord, whatever it takes, because Father, whatever it takes in this world is nothing to compare spending eternity in hell. So, Father, we thank you for the lost, Father, because we know that you are working in their lives. And we know, Father God, that anybody that's here today, Father, that's waiting on you to save their loved ones, Father, we know that it's just a matter of time because you are an on-time God. And, Father, we just give you praise, we give you glory, and we just ask that you be in total control today. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Y'all can be seated. We want to say happy birthday to Azalee, to Victor, to Harper, to Antonio, to Madeline, Penny, Joey, Pastor Martha, Abby, Wade, Logan, Hunter, and others in July. That was just about the whole church. <laughs> All right, today, Children's Church with Miss Tina. And also today we have Junior's class with Miss Lena, ages 9 through 12. And July the 22nd is the ladies' Bible study. That's tomorrow night. Please, ladies, bring your Bibles. Um, and Debbie's going to have the Bible study tomorrow night. So y'all make sure it's on your bulletin. So make sure that you read these scriptures so you'll be prepared. Um, and the men will have a Bible study as well. All right. July the 24th is the Wednesday night Bible study with Kenny at 730 Y'all are missing out if you don't come. We're in the book of Revelation, and it's a very important time for us to be learning about the book of Revelation. August the 4th is, all right, guys, waterworks. 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 Woohoo! That means hot dogs and hamburgers, right? <laughs> okay. All right, we want to welcome all of our guests. Y'all remember all of these in prayer. There's people added to it every week. And we're going to call Debbie up real quick. Y'all give Debbie a hand because she does so much for this church. So I just wanted to, um, next week, I'll send out a reminder to on the, on the church page. We're ha we'll have teens class, teens and young adults, so you don't have to be a teen. Young adults are welcome too. We're having a cookout at Fort Yargo um, immediately after service. So y'all please come. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, we can get the kids there. We can either meet parents after afterwards or, or get them home, whatever we need to do. But um, we'll touch base with y'all. Uh, nobody needs to bring anything. We're just going to get burgers, dogs, chips, maybe watermelon. Keep it simple. But um, with that said, our pastors, <laughs> come on up here. Well, I was originally getting up here to talk about the team's cookout, sure but while I was here, I didn't write a whole lot in there. I'm not going to read it and get all sappy and cry, but we love you guys so much. And <laughs> But yeah, I didn't write a lot of sappy stuff in it this time, but happy birthday. You're appreciated more than you know. And 
Y'all come out tomorrow night to the church meeting and the, the ladies meeting, the men's meeting. Um, going to be a lot of fun. We'll celebrate them again tomorrow night because I'm baking them a cake. So. <laughs> And now I think our special sister, Miss Colleen, has devotion today. I'll give her a hand clap of encouragement. All right, praise God. Okay, um, y'all bear with me. I, I've never had anxiety my entire life until now um, and they give you pills for that so I took one this morning <laughs> a half of one so I'm a little shaky still I'm just trying to hope I can get through this and have the energy but um I had asked mom weeks ago I was like I knew that this was my good week because um, I'm going into chemo this week so this is like my good Sunday that I can come to church and be with you guys so I told her to write me down if no one had signed up yet, and no one did. She sent me a picture of it, and it was open. <laughs> there was people before it and after it, but this day was open. So I said, okay, Lord, you got to give me something, which he did. He actually gave me this probably over a year ago. I've just never come forth. Um, I hope it makes sense. Um, chemo brain is real. <laughs> it's real, y'all. Um, so I struggle a lot with remembering things and doing things. And y'all, I'm going to get my chair because I'm easily winded too. But before I get started, everyone that would with me, just let's say the name Jesus. Jesus. Let's do it again. Jesus. Jesus. One more time. Jesus. Jesus. Father God, I just come before your presence, Lord, before your throne of grace, God. Lord, with all thanksgiving and praise and glory and honor to you, Lord. Lord, just hide me behind the curtain, God. Let your word come forth, Father Lord. Speak through me, dear God, and just penetrate the minds and hearts of everyone here, Lord. And we just praise you and love you and honor you and glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. All right, I saw that on the devotion, you ladies are going to be talking about 1 Samuel 17. So here we go. That's my devotion this morning. So let me just set up the story. I know this is a very long, um, worthy, I'm not going to read the whole thing because it's, it's a pretty long um, chapter. Um, so I'm just going to kind of set up the story for you and bring out what the Lord showed me um, one day while I was sitting and getting my oil changed, believe it or not. <laughs> Michael had a meeting with this other guy down the road at a coffee shop, and I thought, well, I'll just sit and wait for my oil to be changed. That'll give me time with Jesus. And it did. Um, and that's when I had this um, devotion, I guess you would say. All right, so first of all, we've got you know, in war, you've got your two sides. We've got um, the Israelites on one side and you've got the Philistines on the other. The Israelites is King Saul and all the Christians and then the Philistines is where Goliath stands. And there's a man named Jesse. Jesse is a dad of eight sons. Three of his oldest sons are the ones that went to battle with Saul. And then David is his youngest son um, and he was just a shepherd boy. And you know, this war went on for about 40 days. And you know, during that time, I often wondered what the Lord, how the Lord was working with David or on David during that time that this battle was going on and him just a simple shepherd boy in the field. Um, but the Lord, he did a good work in David. <laughs> 
Um, verse 17 through 19, um, Jesse, the dad, he gives instructions to David to bring grain, loaves of bread, cheeses to his brothers and go get assurances. Like um, he basically, you know, it had been a long time and he wanted to hear from his sons. So he sent his youngest to go out and search um, for word. Um, and if I'm going to read verses 20 through 22 real quick. Um, verse 20, it says, Early in the morning, David left the flock with his shepherd. He loaded up and set out, just as Jesse has directed. He reached the camp as many army, as the army was going out to battle, to the battle position, shouting the war cry. Israel and the Philistines were drawing up their lines to face each other. David had left his things with the keeper of the supplies, ran to the battle lines, and greeted his brothers. I wanted to read reread that. 22 again. David left his things with the keeper of the supplies, ran to the battle lines, and greeted his brothers. Now, what the Lord showed me was he had left his things with the keeper of the supplies. And I thought, okay, that's that sounds like a good, a good, it's worth this person persons is worth mentioning. He didn't just go find his brothers and give his brothers the cheese, the breads, and everything. He left it with the keeper of the supplies. And I thought, Lord, sign me up. I'll be a keeper of the supplies. I, I'm part of the battle, but I'm not on the front line. God told me no, obviously, y'all. He told me I have a David in me, so I don't get to do that. But the, that role is important. It's very important, and it's worth mentioning. So David left, you know, of course, that next morning. But before he did, he found another shepherd to watch over his flock. Don't miss that, y'all. He didn't leave his duties untaken care of. He made sure he had his sheep taken care of. Um, just an example, and I hope Barb and Lisa don't mind me saying this, but I've noticed that Barb gathers the trash up at the end of service, and if she's not here, I've noticed that Lisa will do it. You don't leave that duty untaken care of. Um, the keeper of the supplies, this person, persons, most likely, because I'm sure one person couldn't do it. It took many. You know, they're the person that's, staying on top of the supplies, um, keeping everything, you know, the food and making sure everybody has food and tools and everything that they need. Um, and maybe that's you. Maybe you are the keeper of the supplies. Um, Y'all bear with me because my eyesight is, I have twitches and I'm having a hard time seeing and reading. Um, but it doesn't matter how small or insignificant you think your part of the body of Christ is. Your presence is needed. You are worth mentioning. You are missed when you're not here. Everyone has a purpose in this world. Jeremiah 29 11 tells us that. You know, for the, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. You have a purpose within this body of Christ. Whatever your role is, it's important to the Lord, and it's important to the others. Uh, let's go back to 1 Samuel 12 and 24. And Joey, if you can put that on the screen. It says, Be sure to fear the Lord and serve him faithfully with all your heart. Consider what great things he has done for you. I just want you to know that you are a vital part of the kingdom of the Lord and this church. You are loved, you are worthy, and you are worth mentioning. Yes. Now, David, after he left the bread and cheeses and everything with that keeper of the supplies, he found his brothers. He was listening to Goliath shout his usable defiances against the Lord. And all the other soldiers were talking to the king and giving great, you know, were saying that he'll give great wealth, a daughter, and exempt them from taxes, sign me up for that one, to whomever kills the giant. So they're all discussing, you know, David's brothers, of course, just like a sibling does, they give David a hard time. 
you know, like, who are you, and, you know, things like that. Um, Saul got word of what David was saying and sent for him to speak with him. And you go to verse 33, um, they talk about, you know, you're not able to go against the Philistine and fight him. You're just a boy. Um, and this Goliath has been fighting, you know, men since his youth. And then David tries to plead his case and explains, I've fought bears and lions, protected my, she my sheep. And then in verse 38, Saul's like, okay, if you're going to do this, I'm going to give you my armor. And of course, this is just cliff notes, y'all. <laughs> So um, King Saul begins to put the armor on David, and it's the finest armor. I mean, it's, it's fit for a king. So this armor, he, David, you know, put, they put it on him, and he realizes he can't walk in it. There's nothing he can do. It doesn't feel natural to him. And you see, it's because the Lord had already equipped David with everything he needed. He didn't need to put on someone else's armor. How many times do we look and think, I wish I had that? And Brenda and Joey, I <laughs> hope you don't mind me saying this. <laughs> but oftentimes, you know, I've looked at my Aunt Brenda and thought, why can't I have faith like hers to go through these circumstances? And then, you know, I also look at my dad, Joey, my bonus dad. <laughs> And I think, why can't I be joyful like him? He has so much joy, you know, and we try to put on other people's armor, but it's not, it's not us. It's not what God intended for us. Can I have faith? Absolutely. Can I have joy? Absolutely. But it takes, you know, sometimes we look at other people and we're just, you know, why can't I be like that? Excuse me, y'all. Sorry. I'm really having a hard time seeing. Um, but, you know, Psalms 139 and 14 does tell us that we're fearfully and wonderfully made. With much thought, God created us. And we are exactly how we need to be. I mean, our salt and our light is different. Yes. My daughter has, um, she loves this you know, going to Atlanta to these Comic Cons and, you know, different things that I know nothing of, you know. She watches Japanese TV with English subtitles and vice versa. She does things, you know, that I don't understand. Just like with Lena, you know a lot of bikers because y'all have done the, the bike. Like, we're, we're all different. We all can reach different people with our salt and our light. And, you know, I can't reach the youth that Peyton can reach. And she can't reach, you know, some of the adults that I could possibly reach. But we are fearfully and wonderfully made with much thought God created us. He has equipped us with everything we need to face our giants. We only have to believe and trust. Most of us usually know our strengths and our weaknesses. You know, God gives us an abundance of what we need. We only have to have faith to believe that he'll do it. See, David, he didn't come to fight that day. He wasn't even prepared for a battle. But David knew his strength, and he knew it was his strength was within the Lord, and he had faith. He knew he needed what he needed was some stones, and he picked five, but it only took one. God does give us an abundance. Um, Psalms 1 or Psalms 18 and 2 Joey if you'll put that up it says the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer my God is my rock in whom I take refuge my shield and the horn of my salvation and my stronghold yes. praise team if you don't mind go ahead and coming on up I'm gonna get ready to close give them a second to get up here because I don't want them to miss anything either But I just kind of wanted you guys to remember two things today, what the Lord showed me. The Lord showed me the keeper of the supplies, but then he also showed me that we're equipped with everything we already need. Um, but the two things, um, you know, you are worthy. You are worth mentioning. 
and you are needed in the body of Christ. And don't forget that you're missed when you're not here. Whether you're a keeper of the supplies or a David, it takes all of us. And secondly, you have everything you need to face your giants. Now, the Bible doesn't say why David picked five stones, but if you go on the lovely internet, it gives you an idea of what they think. And it says that the five stones represent faith, trust, courage, obedience, and praise. And with that, I'm going to read Psalms 28 and 7. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him, and he helps me. My heart leaps for joy, and with my song, I praise him. If everyone would, we'll stand and worship the Lord together.